on today's episode of the Cryptoverse. The new Sirecoin software is released and aims at revolutionizing cloud storage using its blockchain technology. Dash is the privacy-focused digital currency that offers transactions with instant confirmations. Its unique decentralized decision-making and self-funding system make it an ideal choice as a stable and secure digital cash. Click the link in the video description to learn more. Hi there guys and welcome to the latest episode of The Cryptoverse, your regular dose of news and commentary on Bitcoin, cryptocurrencies and blockchains. I am your host, Chris Coney. So let's get into today's news. Today's news comes from the Cointelegraph once again. This is an article by Walid Dib, and it's entitled Sire, 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 Sire? I guess it's Sire. Sire version 1.03 comes out, aims at revolution in blockchain cloud storage. So I've heard about this project a little bit. I'm going to talk about it quite a bit in this episode obviously, because it's the focus of it. So it starts out this article by saying, the usually quiet but actively running developers behind the decentralized cloud storage Sire have just released their most stable version yet, Sire version 1.0.3. Now, these are actually my personal favorite projects, you know, the ones that are the busy getting to work on their actual product rather than, you know, engaging in any hype that they might care to engage in. Then the article goes on to say, David Vorick, the lead developer behind the project and the Nebulous Labs co-founder, has been working on the project along with a small team of developers since 2014. He describes the main difference between Sire and conventional cloud storage services such as Google Drive and Dropbox in the fact that, quote, companies like Google have openly admitted to doing things like scanning all of their emails. And beyond the abusive privacy policies of these corporations, all of that data sitting in one place is just a juicy target for attackers. In a single compromise, an attacker was able to get nude photos of a massive number of celebrities. Close quote. So in other words, yet another example of problems that can occur with centralized solutions. It creates these honeypots, right? And also, this gives you a clue that celebrities are not that tech savvy. I mean, if they were, I doubt they would be storing nude photos on their Google Drive. In any case, moving on here. It says that Sire, on the other hand, provides the end user with a peace of mind due to the fact that it locks up and encrypts their data, putting them in control and then spreads the data out all over the world in a massive decentralized blockchain database. Since no single person controls enough data to do any damage, no attack can be made to scan or leak the information, and no abusive privacy policies are possible. Now, this is the same basic model as Made Safe and Storage. The difference with Made, State, Made Safe, as far as I know, is that it's not just a blockchain based storage solution. There's a lot more to Made Safe than that. And Storage, on the other hand, I do believe is specializing in decentralized storage. In fact, when researching this episode, I got a bit annoyed and I suddenly realized, Jesus Christ, can I actually use any of these services? I mean, I've been reading about these projects for years and this actually resulted in me actually being able to sign up for an account with Storage. Here it is. And as you can see, if you're watching this on YouTube, very nice web interface. Easy to sign up for an account, except the only way to upload files right now is to use a command line and actually type in commands into the shell. Granted, it still is in beta, but the Sire client, by contrast, looks like this. And if you're watching it on YouTube, you'll see beautiful, beautiful desktop application, all branded in the Sire coin colors and has all these various sections, just like it looks like a wallet. Um, Icons, all very intuitive, very nice. But this uh, episode is not a review of the Sire client, so let's get back to the article here. Let's go down to the green bit that I've highlighted. So the article goes on to say, this is the developers behind the project, quote, 
In the long term, we hope that user-facing apps like Dropbox and Google Drive will be using Sire on the back end. We have built a storage platform that other developers can use to construct their own data storage applications. So now we discover a market that Sirecoin is looking to serve. So they're looking for, say, app developers to outsource their storage to the Sire network. Either that, or they're treating themselves as like a data storage wholesaler who will be invisible. And then the data storage retailers will be those front end applications and services that people actually sign up for. That then leaves the Sire network purely as a technology and backend infrastructure. And they don't have to worry about, you know, end customer service and things like this. They'll just serve their retail clients. Now that assumes they're exclusively going to serve the wholesale market, but they may very well serve the end user as well. As the article goes on to say here in the blue, David explains that even for the tech savvy end user, Sire's storage prices are quite competitive, hovering at the time of writing at around $2 per terabyte per month, with strong indications that the price will remain that low or potentially even continue to drop for the foreseeable future. $2 per terabyte. So let's see how that compares to Amazon Web Services using their calculator. Here's one I prepared earlier. So I went to Amazon Web Services, their simple monthly calculator. I clicked on Amazon S3, which is their super simple storage service. I typed in one terabyte's worth of storage and $30 a month, they quoted, gobsmacking. <laughs> so by comparison, the Sire offering just on a basic comparison is like 15 times cheaper. But more than that, going back to the article, this next bit to me is the most important part in the whole article. This purple bit is under the heading that says the crypto dilemma, Sire versus made safe versus storage. And it says, while there is no formal competition between those three cryptocurrencies, because the cryptocurrency communities and across the web have pictures of these three developers drinking beers together, it should be elaborated that Sire possibly stands out since the, it's the only platform that's completely decentralized. MadeSafe still requires all of their nodes to run on servers under their own control and storage users typically go through a centralized gateway that storage owns. So this is something I didn't know until today and it's a very important detail. And as I showed you a minute ago, I access my new, my new storage account via their web app, which to be fair, could be decentralized in future. And that's only the creation of the account, right? The actual interfacing with the blockchain and the uploading of the files that happens directly. So, and even then I'm sure you could use the command line interface to create an account as well. So in conclusion, then let me just scroll back up to the top so we can look at the image. In conclusion, then, Here's something else you should know about me and how I go about navigating my way through the world of Bitcoin, cryptocurrencies, and blockchains. I don't usually actively seek stuff out. I used to do that, but now I tend to respond to things instead. Now by that, I mean like today is a good example. In a number of previous episodes, I've casually mentioned this Sire coin and its price movements and whatnot, and I knew roughly what it was and roughly what it did, right? However, there are so many crypto projects that me desperately running around trying to understand them all is nigh on impossible. So what I do is I sail around and when something gets my attention, I respond to it. And when I say respond to it, I mean, once something gets my attention, I then, I then begin to move towards it. So how that's going to manifest in this specific situation is that as a result of this very episode of the Cryptoverse, and having learned what I've learned by doing the research for today's episode, I'm now going to start actively experimenting with this Sire coin. Now, I've already done that with MadeSafe, but the experiments never really got any traction, never really went, went anywhere. So now I'm going to see how I can use this Sire as a backend tool in my business, which 
will be primarily how I will benefit from it. But then the happy side effect of that is that I'll be able to feature Sci-Coin in a future episode of the Cryptoverse, where I'll, I'll be able to share what I discovered in my experiments. And now just one final note before I go today. This is actually the way to think about the Cryptoverse and what it really is. I'm not the all-knowing expert on Bitcoin, cryptocurrencies and blockchains. What I'm doing with the Cryptoverse is documenting my research and then sharing the ways of thinking about this stuff that I develop. And the fact is that computing information and then structuring it logically is a very energy intensive process, both mentally and biologically. So if I can repackage this information into easily digestible episodes of the Cryptoverse, which shortcut the process for you, then that's a service that I'm more than happy to provide. So thanks for joining me today, guys. If you liked this episode, hit the like button. If you disliked it, hit the dislike button. Leave me a comment below with some feedback and get subscribed. Or even consider supporting me directly by going to cryptoversity.com forward slash podcast and sending me a Bitcoin tip to the address on that page. If you would like to support me without actually spending any money, then click on the Steam It logo, vote for this episode on the Steam Network. That will get me some cryptocurrency without you actually having to spend a penny. If you prefer something physical in exchange for your donation, then head over to the Cryptoversity store, buy yourself a t-shirt with the Cryptoversity branding on it. That kind of thing helps me out a lot. Or if you would like more structured information on Bitcoin, cryptocurrencies and blockchains, head over to the courses section and buy yourself an online course. But that's all for today. I will be back with you tomorrow for the next episode of the Cryptoverse with more commentary on Bitcoin, cryptocurrencies and blockchains. Until then, it's me, Chris Coney, saying bye for now.